Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. A beautiful roast like this doesn't come easy. It's a lot of hard work, but once you put in that hard work, you're gonna have something freaking amazing. <laughs> I had to find a hunter that was willing to share a deer with me. Then I had to get my butcher to bring it over to me and then together we took it apart, which I ended up putting in a dry aging cabinet. And now finally it's time to take the rack out. <laughs> and literally, what a rack. Look at this, what a beauty. A dry aged deer rack, absolutely freaking amazing. It built up a build of pedicle. It's been in the dry aging cabinet for seven days which is not enough to get a real heavy dry age on it, but it sure is enough to get a little bit more flavor and a little bit more tenderness out of this beautiful deer. And of course, I don't have one, I have two, because that's gonna be the trick. I'm gonna put these things together, and then in between, we're gonna have that stuffing. So I wanna take off the pellet hole, I'm gonna use the right knife, and I don't wanna slice off too much, because this is absolutely fantastic stuff. And look at the beautiful dark red meat that appears. Looks absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. A dry aged rack of a deer. I'm gonna do the other one the same way. Now I've got two beautiful racks from both the opposite side ready to be cooked. But before we're gonna do that, I'm gonna season them first. With a steak, I like to season it afterwards. With a roast, I like to season it up front. So there we go, a little bit of salt, too much. This is delicate meat, both sides on both pieces. A little bit of fresh ground black pepper. Then it's time to bring out the Scottsburg pan, warm it up, put in a stick of butter and chop fine an onion. Of course, a clove of garlic. Add the garlic and the onion and fry it until it's soft. Then add 150 grams of cranberries. Put the lid on the pan, take it off the fire and let it cool down. Grill six slices of white bread, then put them in the blender. Add a bunch of fresh parsley, a handful of toasted walnuts, some fresh ground black pepper, a little bit of salt, and then grind it up. Then when it has a core structure like this that you can pinch and form into a dough, then you know your stuffing is done. Oh. <laughs> I could just eat this. Then it's time to use that stuffing. I'm gonna put it straight in the center and we're going to turn this into one big roast. This is gonna be so freaking amazing. Look at the colors coming together. This is gonna to be so beautiful. Little bits of green. It's chunky, it is doughy. All right, now comes the trick. So I'm gonna bring both racks together like that. Don't worry about that stuffing that's gonna fall into place. Just focus on the bones. If you don't know how to do those special butchered nuts, just make it easy like I do. Just a simple nut that you use to tie up your shoelaces will be more than sufficient because this is not rocket science and I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible so everybody can do this at home. A little bit of extra butcher's twine. This is purely to make it look good because functionally this roast is already done. There we have it, the end result looks absolutely amazing. A little bit of extra work putting the rest of the butcher's twine in but this thing looks like a beast. It's ready for the grill so let's take it outside and start cooking. So I'm gonna fire up my Napoleon bullet smoker and we're gonna be smoking that roast. Grab a couple of those embers and put them in my grill. I'm gonna put the first stack on, put my grill grate on top of that stack. That's where I'm gonna place my roast, right there. And you can see this roast has a lot of height. So I'm gonna put another stack on top of it, followed by the lid, and then I'm gonna dial this in to a temperature of around 140 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna dial it in with the bottom vent. I just checked and the roast is at a temperature of 54 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Now, that took a longer time than expected, but that's natural when you have the cold weather outside and you're working with these temperatures. So take that into consideration. Something like this, which weighs around one to one and a half kilogram, might take up to one and a half hours. But look at the results. <laughs> it was worth the wait. Beautiful dark red meat, which we already had, but it pops even more from the smoke flavor that we get from the Napoleon barbecue. It is so freaking beautiful. This thing is absolutely amazing. <laughs> that looks so good. Wow, beautiful juicy meat. 
nice stuffing and look at the color of the stuffing it goes so well with the rest of the roast this looks freaking amazing and of course i made a beautiful red wine reduction sauce to go with it so i heated up a scottsburg pan added a lump of butter a fine chopped white onion a clove of garlic a glass of red wine and i let that boil until it was almost completely evaporated then i added the bay leaf two cloves and four peppercorns followed by 100 milliliters of chicken stock and 200 milliliters of beef font and then i'm going to reduce it by half and finish it off with some salt and pepper. Then pour it through a sieve and your sauce is ready. Now let's serve that up. What an absolutely freaking amazing result. You can do this too. Just call your butcher. Let him know you need a piece of beer. Cheers. Mm.